was um, just uh, thanking God and praying and, and uh, praising for what had happened because it had been such a long journey, you know, and uh, I, I feel very fortunate that in the year 2000 I got involved with the company at the right moment and, uh, you know, we, we did well. And you know, I got to a point where I was averaging you know, over half a million a year, and my last year at that company was over seven hundred thousand dollars. And I, I, I got to a place where I, I felt like I was not being honest with people. I got to a point where I, I was on stage, I was talking to people that you could do it, and, and I didn't. I stopped believing it. I started looking, and, and I'm like, I, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And uh, I, I left. And I, I knew I was leaving at least, I knew I was walking away from at least a half a million dollars a year. I knew that. I thought I was going to at least be able to keep the book of business that I spent 10 years of my life building. But interestingly enough, the, the CEO that had been a CEO for almost 38 years decided to step down a couple of weeks after I left. And then they took my income away. And, you know, when I met this beautiful woman here, you know, I was doing good. You know, I had a Lamborghini, I had all sorts of things that you think would be success. I thought those symbols of success, they didn't really matter. And when we met, you know, we, we, uh, she was, when we walked away, she was five months pregnant with her, with her first baby girl. And uh, I remember leaving because I just didn't, I didn't feel good attaching my name to something that I didn't think people that got involved were going to succeed. And that's just how I felt. And we left it. And we just went straight into the gutter. Like, you know, when, when you don't have any income, and I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about doing a job, I was just thinking of business, you know, like you break out of the matrix, it's just business, it's all I was thinking. And besides that, there was no job that would hire me. I was a high school dropout, you know, I didn't have any thing to go to. I just knew this industry, that's all I knew. And within, um, Within a year, we'd sold off all of our all of our stuff, and I thank God for this this woman right here who sold her wedding ring so we could have food. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? She didn't. She didn't doubt for a second. You know, I, and I was thinking to myself, you know, like with kids, you know, and, and wh wh what are we gonna do? Because. I wouldn't take a deal. I wouldn't take money from anybody. You know, people would offer us, hey, look, we know you understand the business. You know, I, here's some money. And I, I could, it wasn't passion. I'm like, I can't, we can't do it. We needed the money. And I'm going, God, what, it, what is happening? What did I do? Did I do something wrong? Because I didn't feel like I did. And, you know, I, I borrowed money from my friends and my mom. And we're like, we're going we're gonna to build another business. And we lose everything we have between November of 2010 and uh, April of 2012, or two, you know, 2011, everything. And if it wasn't for her, you know, she went to the food stamp office. She got food stamps. I wouldn't. I was too prideful. I'm like, no way, we're not going to do it. Already, all our cars are repossessed. I'm driving my brother's van. Six thousand dollars negative in one account. A thousand dollars in another account, upside down. Oh, we're getting evicted out of our house. I don't know where we're going to go. And, uh, you know, I, I thank God every day for, for John and Tiffany Malott because of all the people in that company that's, that they, they told me, man, I love you, man. You changed my life. You know, what you said impacted me. It's all this crap they would tell me. I'm your friend forever, no matter what, man, no matter what. Those people disappeared when I just left the company. It's all I did. I didn't, it's not like I... I did anything wrong, I just decided not to be there. But John and Tiffany stayed friends. They stayed to be my friends, no matter what. And at, at rock bottom, I was, I was going somewhere else. I was just like, all I know is network marketing. I got involved with another company at the bottom. I'm like, I'm just gonna build it up. I didn't know what else to do. I'd seen so many other companies and I was sick of the industry. I'm like, I just, I don't know. And John calls me and says, look, Josh, I'm open, man. I'm open. I know you've been looking around. Tell me what's up. And there was two different people that I, that I knew. And I, I called the first person, and what's crazy is 
I told him who, who Mr. Malat was and Mr. Tiffany Malat was. I said, look, this person, I, they look, they're looking for something real. They're looking for, they're, they're, don't give them some crap company. It's gotta, it's gotta be a real company, like with heart, because these are good people and they care about the people. And the reason they're looking to move is because they care about the people they're leading. They're like us, they, they, they don't want to lead someone into in, in something that's not gonna be real. And, and I prayed and I, I, what happened was, was amazing, because I met Tim Her. You know, I'd known of Tim for like 10 years. I heard about him. I heard about his story. I heard about how much success he'd had and how he'd helped other people have success. And my wife and I met him. And it's funny, of all the people we'd met, like, we loved Tim. We loved Tim and Jill. And we sat there. They took us to this Korean barbecue. It was kind of cool because after a while, we're, we're, we're accepting people's invitations because it meant free food. <laughs> we're like, man, hope Tim takes us out again, man. We're hungry. <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Tim was just... And I resonated with the story. I resonated with what had happened to him and how he'd went through it. And I said, I don't know what's going to happen. I just like this guy. And we, we, we weren't going to work with him then, but we knew that he'd been looking at all these different companies. And, and, and I promise you, when I was praying, after John called me, I said, look, I felt God move me to call Tim. It was the weirdest thing. And I'm like, okay, if, because I couldn't get a hold of John half the time, or Tim. Sometimes it's like voicemail. I'm like, all right, if I get a hold of both of them at the same time, this is a sign, man. And I get a hold of them both the time and... I didn't even know what Tim was doing. I had no idea. And Tim talked about secret, and, and we went, and the journey started. Now, we're still in this situation, and this is, what, this is what sold us. When we flew out and we met with Isaac, you know, he was the first person we met, met with Isaac, and, and in his eyes, I could tell this is a man that's unlike anyone I'd ever met. You know, he, and, and Cindy's like my lie detector. So she, I don't know, she's got that, she's been 100% right every single time. She says, that person's bad. I'm like, no, they're not, man. She's like, she's like, just watch. I'm like, no way. And sure enough, I'm like, dang it. And I hate it because she's right all the time. And, and afterwards, you know, I'm looking at her like, is, is, this, is this guy real? You know, because we sat at Stingray. I'm like, really? Is this guy? And she's like, she's like yeah, I think so. I, mean, I, I feel it. I'm like, really? I mean, she loved the product. She loved Isaac. And, and we, that, that was what it was. I said, if, if, if. This is the person we get to work around. I'll work at a kiosk. I'll, I'll go clean the warehouse. If I get to work around leadership like that, that's all I was looking for is real mentorship, real people. Who didn't care just about the money. Money's not hard to make once you figure this out, once you learn this stuff and do it. Money's not hard. Paul Meyer said, Josh, be a collector of good people, and you'll always be wealthy. And I'm like, that's the best person I've ever met. <laughs> Let me tell you this, because we, we wouldn't take anything, and we're being evicted. I mean, the sheriff, on my birthday, we were getting kicked out. I had to go to the courthouse. Isaac finds out. Isaac and Brittany get on a plane. They, they wouldn't take no for an answer. He flies to my house. He gets, he's like, this is the CEO of this company. He flies to my house. He packs a 35-foot truck. He does. He helps pack it. We still have some stuff left over, so he drives, him and Brittany drive the truck back to Arizona. Who does that? That's the kind of man who's at the helm of this company. And it's everyone around him. Betty and Hayden, and these guys work tirelessly every day. Every day. And they're happy about what, what's happening here. They're happy. They work for us. Robert Maravich, Diana, th these, I mean, they, they're always there helping, no matter what. She's shy. Um, you know, want to thank uh, the Secret Family for giving my family a home, a place that we can call home finally. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody.